Hi everyone, I'll be showing how you can install Linux Mint without using a USB drive or DVD. You'll need a minimum of 20 gigabytes on your hard drive and 3 gigabytes for the ISO. In Windows Disk Management, I have my 476 gig drive here and I have 442 gigabytes free, so more than enough free space. So I'm going to download Linux Mint, going to linuxmint.com and then click on download. And there are three flavors available. You got Cinnamon, which is sleek, modern, and innovative. XFCE, which is light, simple, and efficient. And it's lighter on resource usage. And finally, you got Mate. So for me, I am going to download Cinnamon and scroll down and select the mirror where you want to download it from. Once downloaded, go into your downloads folder. I'm going to mount the ISO image. Hit enter to mount or right click and hit mount. Open. And this will mount the ISO. In my case, it's mounting it to the D drive. And then go into disk management. And then I'm going to be shrinking my C drive to make room for Linux Mint and the ISO. Select it, right click, shrink volume. And I'm going to use 100 gigabytes for Linux Mint and 3 gigabytes for the ISO. So 103,000. Shrink. Next, select the unallocated space, right click, new simple volume, next, and this will be 3000, next, and then assign the drive letter, next, I'm going to select FAT32, I'm going to call this mint underscore ISO, next, finish. All right, we see the F drive here, going back into Explorer. I'm going to copy everything from the D drive, go into my new F drive, and I'm going to paste. All right, it's completed. And your BIOS should be able to detect this partition and boot from it. But if it does not, then it may need to be recognized as an EFI system partition. So we can change that by going into disk part, going back into disk management, open up disk part as administrator. Yes, list my disk, select disk zero, list my partitions, and partition five is my F drive. I'm going to select it, type in help set ID, type in set ID equals, I'm going to scroll up, I'm going to look for the EFI system partition value in hex, I'm going to copy it, and paste, enter. And it has been changed, and we see in disk management it's been changed as well. And now I'm going to reboot my computer and go into the BIOS. In your BIOS, ensure that secure boot is disabled. And if you have fast boot, disable it as well. And now I'm going to do a one time boot into the installation media partition. And it's labeled as UFI OS. And how I can confirm that, if I go back into Windows, open up a command prompt as admin. Type in bcd edit space forward slash enum space firmware. And we can see at the bottom there partition F, which is the F drive that was created, and the description UFI OS. So I'm going to select it. So I'm going to start Linux Mint. All right, it's booted into the live environment. When installing Linux Mint by default, it will use the same EFI partition alongside Windows. The EFI partition is where the boot manager files are located. Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in this EFI partition, which would include Linux Mint, and this can happen, for example, after a Windows update. So to avoid this, I will be creating a separate EFI partition just for Linux Mint. Before starting the installer, I'm going to go into Gparted, which is GNU Partition Editor. And here we can see all the partitions. In the installer, it will be checking if there are any existing EFI partitions, which can be problematic if you want to use a separate EFI partition. So I'll be temporarily removing the boot flag from SDA1, and then after the install, I'll put it back. Also as well, the boot flag on SDA4 will be removed. Going to SDA1, right click, manage flags, and remove boot, close, and SDA4, Manage flags, 
check, close. And close GPAR did. I'm going to start up the installer. Select your language, continue, keyboard, continue, install multimedia codecs, continue. All right, and you'll come to this screen here and it's going to show your disk. So there's dev SDA and then here's my partitions. And so I'm going to go to the free space that I have here, which is 100 gigabytes or so. And then I'm going to add. And I'm going to create my EFI partition just for Linux Mint. I'll make it 512 megabytes. And go to use as. Scroll down. EFI system partition. Hit OK. Scroll down. And we see it has been created. Going back to the free space. Add. And the next partition will be for swap. And I have 12 gigabytes of RAM on my system here. So I'm going to put 12 gigs. Use as. Swap. OK. Scroll down. Going back to the free space. Add. And to keep it simple, I'm going to use the rest of the free space for slash. So in this case, the mount point would just be slash. And I'm going to keep it as ext4 as the file system and then hit OK. Scroll down. And so there are my new partitions, EFI, and there's swap, and there's slash. And then device for bootloader installation. This is going to be on SDA6, my EFI partition. And then hit install now. And it's asking to confirm. And once ready, hit continue. Here it's asking where you're from, so select where you're from. This is for the time zone, and then hit continue. Here fill in your name, computer name, username, and password. And at the bottom here it says to log in automatically or require my password to log in. I'm going to keep it as the default to require my password to log in. And here it says to encrypt my home folder, so if you want to encrypt, I'm not going to encrypt, and hit continue. And now it's going to install, and you can go down here, click, and it will show the status. You can go back and click. And as the installation media is on your drive here, it shouldn't take too long to install. All right, installation has completed. Go to continue testing. I'm going to go back into Gparted. I'm going to go to SDA1. Right click. Manage flags. I'm going to select the boot flag. Hit close. And SDA4, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to close. And now when you reboot, Linux Mint should start. But just to confirm, I'm going to reboot and go back into the BIOS. So in my boot order, I see the Windows Boot Manager is first, GFI OS is second, and three is Ubuntu. And it says Ubuntu because Linux Mint is based off of Ubuntu. So what I need to do is have it set as option number one. All right, now it's changed to option number one, and I'm going to save changes and exit. All right, we can see it booted directly into Linux Mint. So there was no grub menu to select between Linux Mint and Windows. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to log in. I'm going to close the welcome window. Open up a terminal. I'm going to sudo in. Type in your password. Type in OS Prober. This will probe for other operating systems. So in this case, Windows. All right. We can see that it sees the Windows Boot Manager, so that's good. Now I'm going to make a new grub configuration file. So grub make config, and then dash o boot grub grub.cfg. And we can see at the bottom it's found the Windows Boot Manager, so it has been included, so that's good. And now I'm going to reboot my computer. All right, so grub comes up as expected, and we got Linux Mint, and then there's the Windows Boot Manager. So I'm going to boot into Linux Mint just to confirm. All right, Linux Mint comes up as expected, and I'm going to restart and select Windows. Select Windows. All right, Windows comes up. I'm going to log in. Open up Disk Management. All right, so there are my three partitions for Linux Mint, the EFI partition, swap, and slash. And I no longer need the F drive, the Linux Mint partition. So I'm going to select it, right click, and delete. Yes. And I'm going to extend my C drive. Extend. Next, next, finish. So that's it. That's how you can install Linux Mint without using a USB drive or DVD. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.